What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Team Fish Knuckles' YouTube channel. Today we're doing the 2009 World Championship Breakdown that we use for the next three series. And this time around, we have the Queen Guard deck, and we have the Crown Tiger deck. Now, the Crown Tiger deck we use, was used by a junior who won the championship. As you see right here, it says the junior who won. I'm not really sure how to say the name, but you, there you go. You can take a stab at it if you want to. And we have the Queen Queen. Queen Guard deck, which is the junior division finalist at the 2009 World Championship, uh, Championship piloted by Jason Mar Martinez, maybe? Uh, but let's break down these decks real quick so that way you know what they're doing in these matches here. So first up, we have Crobat G. And uh, Queen Guard was the kind of a deck that I used to play. Uh, Gengar is one of my favorite Pokemon, so I was really happy to see this deck being printed here. But here we have Crobat. It says once during your turn, when you put Crobat G from your hand onto your bench, you may put one damage counter on one of your opponent's Pokemon, and you have Toxic Fang. The defending Pokemon is now poisoned. Put two damage counters instead of one on the defending Pokemon. Now the cool thing here is Flash Bite. You can just put ten damage counters anywhere you want to, and depending on certain cards, you can use Crobat a lot of times during the series. Alright, so next up we have Unknown G. Now, Unknown G is a pretty cool card. Uh, the Unknowns back then, they had a lot of different letters. We're actually getting a reprint of an Unknown now. We have Unknown coming out, which is a reprint of Unknown R, which does the same exact thing where you discard it and you draw a card. But Unknown G says once during your turn before you attack. If Unknown G is on your bench, you may discard all cards attached to Unknown G and attach Unknown G to one of your Pokemon as a tool. As long as Unknown G is attached to a Pokemon, prevent all effects of attacks excluding damage done to that Pokemon. And that way, if for some reason, you get paralyzed, maybe you get... There's maybe a gust of wind effect or poison. It doesn't. Uh, the only thing that really hurts it is the damage and not the effect, which is pretty cool there. And you can use hidden power, which does 50. If unknown G has any damage counters on this attack, does it's 10 instead. Uh, so you're not really going to attack with here. Now here comes Yuxi. Yuxi is kind of a card that we have out now. It's called Shaman. EX, uh, except Yuxi has setup, which is just like Shaman we have it now, uh, but you draw to you have 7 instead of 6. Now this tech is, is Psychic Restore. I, I like the uh, Sky Return more, um, just because Psychic Restore, you put Yuxi on the bottom of your deck while Sky Return goes back in your tech, and uh, Shaman does 30 instead of the 20. It's just a cooler effect because it goes back into your hand instead of the bottom of your deck like Yuxi. Alright, next up we have a ball toy in Claydol. We're not really going to worry about the ball toy. We'll go straight into Claydol here. Now, Claydol was a staple in almost every deck here. Uh, Claydol says, once during your turn before you attack, you may choose up the two cards from your hand and put them on the bottom of your deck. If you do, draw cards, you have six cards in your hand. Uh, this power can't be used if Claydol is affected by a special condition. Now, back then, if a Pokemon had a Poke Power and was affected by a special condition, uh, the majority of the part, it couldn't use it. And that was a cool feature back then. I kind of wish they would have that now, but for some reason, they don't. Uh, but yeah, like I said, Claydol, for some reason, it's they're not the English version. It's, I don't know what that says. Um, but Claydol was used in almost every deck just because the setup, or just the Cosmic Power, such a strong card. To help draw through your deck, it was really good. Combine this, you can see you're going to draw through your deck fairly quickly. Uh, oh, well, we'll come down there. All right, so next up we have Zangus. Now, uh, now it only played one Zangus in here, and this is kind of just a techie card. Uh, Zangus can't be affected by any, any special conditions. And invite and strike, switch to defending Pokemon with one of your opponent's bench Pokemon. This attack does 20 damage. Chop up 50, does 10 damage to each of your opponent's bonus bench Pokemon that has any damage counters on it. I can't really, really remember why it was used at the time, but it's either as one of the deck. Maybe there's something out that I can't remember right now they use it for. Alright, so we have Nidoran, Nido Rhino, and Nido Queen. We're gonna look at Nido Queen. Uh, don't really the baby stages don't really matter here. Uh, the main thing you need to know about Nido Queen here is at any times it has maternal comfort. At any times between turns, you remove one damage counter from each of your Pokemon. You can't use more than one maternal comfort Poke Body between turns. So basically you're just healing ten damage off a of Pokemon between turns, which is pretty cool there. Now you only use it once, so you can't have multiple Nido Queens working there. Uh, you only have one out. And it has Mega Punch 40 and Ruthless Tail 50. And it does 50 damage plus 10 for each damage. For each more damage for each each of your opponent's bench Pokemon. There we go. So they have five bench Pokemon. You can do 100 total. Um, yeah, if I, read that, if I remember that correctly. So you can do 100 total with the Ruthless Tail, uh, which is a pretty cool attack there. But Mega Punch for just energy for 40 is pretty cool there also. Um, the Ghastly, the main thing you want to know about the Ghastly here, if I remember, if this is a Pitch Dark Ghastly, yeah. So Pitch Dark Ghastly, um, which you'll people will refer that to a lot. If they talk about Ghastly back in the day, they're going to talk about this Ghastly um, always. Pitch Dark says your opponent can't play any item cards. Or actually, there was a typo and it says, yo, 
you opponent, you opponent can't play any training cards from his or her hand. It's like I I, I made this card because I make typos all the time. But it's supposed to say your opponent can't play any training cards from his or her hand during your opponent's next turn, which is pretty good there. And it doesn't even need energy. It just it just has a colors. Uh, it doesn't even have a colors. So I don't. It just has a no energy attack, which is pretty cool there. I wish they would have this. And trick gas, ten damage. You may switch ghastly with one of your bench Pokemon. And uh, next up, we have the Gengar. Oh, what, what do we just click on? Go away, Team Galactic. We'll go to you a second. Now we have Gengar here. Um, Gengar is a pretty cool Pokemon here. Uh, once during your turn, if Gengar will be knocked out by damage from attack, give me flip a coin. If has the defending Pokemon is also knocked out, and that's a pretty cool attack there. So if your opponent KOs you, you flip a coin. If has, they're also dead, and you can punish them from actually knocking you out, which is pretty cool there. Now you can do Shadow Room, put three damage counters on one of your opponent's Pokemon. Um, if that Pokemon has any Poke Powers, put six damage counters on it. Which is pretty cool there. Um, like we said earlier, you have the Crobat. You can put 10 damage and combine that. And let's see here. We have this Yuxi here. We'll just uh, kind of get a sidetrack. But if you see, Yuxi has a Poke Power, 70 HP. Gengar does 6 on a Pokemon that has Poke Powers, which Yuxi does. So you can put 6 damage on it, put a Crobat down, and you can knock out a Yuxi uh, that way, which is pretty cool there. Just a little combo that some people use. And you have Poltergeist here. Look at your opponent's hand. This attack does 30 damage times the number of trainer, supporter, and stadium card in your opponent's hand. Uh, which is pretty cool there. If your opponent has a bunch of trainer cards from locking with the pitch dark, you can use Poltergeist and do a lot of damage with the uh, Poltergeist attack. And that's the main attack really used here is Poltergeist, which is pretty cool there. And that's all the Pokemon in the deck. Uh, and I say all, that's a pretty, it's a lot of Pokemon in the deck, I'm not going to lie to you. Alright, so let's go over some of the trainer cards. Now we have a Poke turn here, and we're going to see this Team Galactic stuff a lot in the uh, Crown Tiger deck. But this Team Galactic... Inventions Poke Turn says return one of your Pokemon SP and all cards attached to your hand. Now, if you're wondering what's an SP, I will go down this Crobat and we, like I said, we played two Crobat and it has the Flash Bite attack. And if you notice, it says SP right here. I'm not really sure if my mouse is showing up, but on the left of this Crobat, if it'll load for me, um, you'll see that it says SP. And if it has this, like, you see how it says Crobat G? Um, if they have something like that or this SP, they're an SP Pokemon. And uh, that's how you can tell if they're an SP Pokemon or not. But you return one po one SP Pokemon and all cards into your hand, which is pretty cool there. And uh, you can reuse your SP Pokemon that way. Mainly just a Crobat just to use more damage. Two Broken Time Space. Now, everybody wishes this card still exists here. Now, we are getting a reprint, kind of, in this Ancient Origin set coming up. But it's a Grass Pokemon and not all Pokemon. But it basically just says each player may evolve a Pokemon that he or she just put in play in or evolved during that turn. So basically what you could do here is you can go straight from Ghastly Hunter to Gengar in one turn. Uh, you don't need no red candy, you don't need nothing special. You can go straight from Baltoy to Claydol. It's just a really good card. I wish Broken Time Space would be reprinted. I'm not sure how broke it would be. Um, I imagine there'd be some kind of sick combos there. Um, but well, we're going to get it in the future set. Uh, we're going to get a Vileplume and the... I'm not really sure what the giant forest is called, but it's going to be the same thing, but with grass Pokemon. Uh, two Night Maintenance, if you played Super Rod, it's the same exact thing here. Uh, search your discard pile up th for up to three in any combination of Pokemon and basic energy. So basically up to three Pokemon and or energy cards, you kind of combine them together, show them to your opponent, and shuffle them into your deck. Uh, like I said, it's just like a Super Rod that we've had before. Two War Point, which is kind of just like our Escape Rope that we have now. Um... Yeah, as you see, there's all these different prints here. Uh, I'm not really sure which one's the correct one to read off here. Um, if your opponent has any bench Pokemon, he or she chooses one of them and switches their active. And then if you have any bench Pokemon, you switch them, you're active. Um, so it's like the same thing like I said with the escape rope we have now. Your opponent switches their bench Pokemon, you switch your bench Pokemon. For Roseanne's research, uh, I really love this card. I wish we would kind of get it back into the game. Uh, search your deck for up to two combination of basic Pokemon and basic energy cards. Show them to your opponent and put them in your hand. Shuffle your deck afterwards. Uh, so basically you can get like two Gastlys. You can get a Gastly and a Psychic Energy. You can get two Psychic Energies. Any combination you want to, which is pretty cool here. And also you can get like a... Uh, a Ghastly and a Uxie, so you can put down the Ghastly and help set up with Uxie, which is pretty cool there. I kind of, Like I said, I wish they would reprint that, just because it has the energy effect, which you kind of need to. So here we have Pokedex. Um, I don't know why it has that weird print after it. Um, oh, because it's right here. I forgot about that. Um, next to that, Pokedex actually says the handy 9 tenths, um thing. So let's see. It says look at the top two cards of your deck. Choose one of them and put them in your hand. 
put the other card on the bottom of your deck. And this is just to help you set up uh, kind of just like our Acro Bike, but except you discard with Acro Bike, and this one you don't. Uh, once again, it, most of these cards that we see nowadays are kind of reprints. Uh, one Luxury Ball, and now I've seen some decks actually play two Luxury Ball, which is pretty weird. But, um, <laughs> oh, never mind. I was thinking, I wasn't thinking of Luxury Ball, I was uh, thinking of something else. Uh, search deck for Pokemon, excluded Pokemon level X, show it to your Pokemon and put it into your hand, shuffle your deck afterwards. If any Luxury Ball is in your disco pile, you can't play this card. Yeah, yeah, that's what I saw. Okay, yeah. I see some decks play two Luxury Ball because you want to tr draw into it early, but once you have a Luxury Ball in the discard pile, you can't reuse it. And it's just a really cool card. You can just play it, get any Pokemon you want to, um, which obviously helps you set up fairly quickly. <laughs> and I, I don't know. I guess the Luxury Ball is kind of like the Master Ball we have now. Um, so now we have two Lookers Investigation here, and this is a cool trick you can play depending on if you, when you want to pull your guys or not. So basically it says, look at your opponent's hand, then choose you or your opponent. That player shuffle his or her hand into their deck and drop to five cards. So if you use it and see your opponent's like, man, they have five Trainer Supporter Stadiums, I'm going to keep that. We're going to pull your guys for 150. Um, but I'm going to shove my hand in, into my deck, which is um, obviously a really cool combo there. But if you see that they don't, um, if they have like a bunch of good, if they have a bunch of good cards, you can actually get rid of them and hopefully draw, make them draw to a mediocre hand, which is probably another cool play too. But uh, like I said, you can see how much you're going to do with Poultry Guys and decide if you want to use that or not. And you can also sh uh, set up with your hand too. Uh, full Rare Candy, we know what that does. Oh, well, the thing to know about Rare Candy here is uh, I'll go over here in a second is you can use it on the first turn so you can automatically uh, there's, there's different lottery prints here um, <laughs> you can you can't use this card during your first turn but uh, back in here you could use it on the first turn so as soon as you got a, a ghastly out you can rare candy it to a gingar which is pretty cool there or you can actually rare candy a ball toy and a clay doll it doesn't matter what stage it is so that's something to point out there uh, three baby Bay search Another really good staple back in the day. Uh, kind of, it's kind of like Pokemon communication that we've had before. Choose a card from your hand, put it on top of your deck, search deck for Pokemon, show it to your opponent, put it into your hand, shuffle your deck afterwards. Now, a lot of these cards are going to be really good once Vileplume comes out. I know we're kind of switching topic, topics here, but uh, that's why Bebe's and all this stuff was good because there was a Spirit... I think Spirit Tomb was out? Uh, maybe it wasn't. Um, but these cards are really good because Spirit Tomb... Makes it where you can't play any trainers and uh, all these supporter. Um, they, they really were supporter cards because they really did help you a lot. Um, but it's just really cool. You can search for any Pokemon that you want to. Uh, three Call Energy, which is another setup card here. And um, it just says it, it's a, a basically an attack card. Like you know how G Booster, you G Booster, and you can attack that way. Or Tropical Beach. This is another card that does kind of that effect. Um, it says once during your turn, if the Pokemon if the Pokemon Call Energy attached to your active Pokemon, you may search deck for two basic Pokemon. Put them into your bench. If you do, shuffle your deck, and your turn ends. So if you hit, like, let's say you turn one, you start a Uxie, you attach Call Energy. You can search for two Gastly's, maybe a, uh, maybe I don't know what you know, just two basic Pokemon. I don't know a Ball Toy and something uh, a Gastly. You don't want to, um, you don't want to search for Uxie, obviously, because they go straight to your bench and they don't go to your hand. And seven Psychic Energy. So this is the Queen Guard deck. Um, if I, I think. Kenton actually changed his world's deck up some, but I could be wrong. Um, but I don't think I don't remember him playing the Pokedex at all. Uh, but now we got the Queen Guard deck. We'll go to Crown Tiger here, um, which is a pretty I don't know. It's a complicated deck. I don't I don't really like it that much. Um, but I got stuck playing with it, unfortunately in the series because Kenton's also um, favorite card was Gengar. But let's go over Honchko here. Once again, it's another no energy attack here. Search deck for two combination of stadium cards or training cards that has Team Galactic's invention in its name. Show them to your opponent and put them in your hand. Once again, if you see the Honchko does have the SP between um, the lines. So you can see the Honchko G and the SP. That's how you know it's an SP Pokemon or a Team Galactic Pokemon. And it has target attack here. Choose one of your opponent's Pokemon. This attack does 20 damage to that Pokemon. If that Pokemon has any damage counters on it, this attack does 20 damage plus 20 more. So you can hit it for 40 that way. And then when, like Crobats, once again, I think this deck plays Crobats. So you can do damage that way. I play as a 2-2 Lux right here. We'll go over the Luxury Level X, and I'll explain the Level X mechanic um, right now too, just in case you don't want to don't know what it is. So, Level X is you can only put um, a Level X on a Pokemon that has been to play already. Yeah, you can't skip that around. So once you have been to play, it has to be in the active spot. So to evolve a Luxray into a Luxray Level X, it has to be in the active spot, and uh, that's 
once you've put it level X, you can actually use the previous attack and right here in the bottom right here. It says put this card onto your active Luxray. Luxray level X can use the attack, Poke Power, Poke Body from its previous level. And all the level X could do this. It could use its previous uh, attacks, which is pretty cool there. Uh, once during your turn before you attack, when you put Luxray level X from your hand onto your active Luxray, you may switch to defending Pokemon with one of your opponent's bench Pokemon. And this is why Luxray was one of the biggest SP one of the biggest cards in this format because you could bring up it's basically a catcher or a lysander but it's a power which is really strong and you can bring up any pokemon you want to to knock it out and we have flash impact does 60 does 30 damage to one of your opponent what to one of your opponent to one of your opponent oh my goodness does 30 damage to one of your pokemon there we go don't buy weakness or resistance so 60 and 30 to one of your pokemon i don't know why i was stuttering over that so hard um okay so now he have two toxic Cork here uh, and as you see, there is a split between two and this one Toxic and we'll go over that in a second, obviously. Um, so, Anticipation says, prevent all effects of attacks, including damage done to Toxic G, and Deep Poison, oh, uh, excluded damage, so it gets still hit by damage, so remember that too. Um, it just can't be poisoned or anything crazy like that. Uh, deep Poison here, if the defending Pokemon is poisoned, this attack does 20 more damage. Uh, this attack does 20 damage plus 40 more damage. Um, which is pretty cool there. So 20, this deck does 20, and then 40 more, so 60, and then the poison 70, um, which it's a lot of damage back then. And I'll keep that up here in a second, I'll show you why. Uh, we have this other Toxicroak here. Um, this Toxicroak has the leap away once during a turn. Before you attack, if Toxicroak is your active Pokemon, you may flip a coin if has returned Toxicroak and all cards attached to your hand. This power can be used, once again, if it's affected by a special condition. Poison Revenge, if any of your Pokemon are knocked out by damage from an opponent's attack during his or her last turn, this attack does 20 damage plus 40 more damage, and the defending Pokemon is now poisoned. So basically, like I says, in the attack, it is a revenge attack if a Pokemon is knocked out by damage from an opponent's attack. Uh, you can do a lot of damage to them, 60, and then they're poisoned, which is pretty cool there. And then once yeah, that happens, you can leap away, put the Toxic Coke back in hand, get the uh, all the energies and everything attached to it, and start attacking with somebody else. And if somebody else gets knocked out, you can do the same thing, drop a Toxic Coke, uh, maybe attach your energy, um, attach a, what is it, a, um, I forget what it's called already. An energy gain, which we'll go over here in a second. Um, but once again, it's another SP Pokemon here. Alright, so next up we have the Skunk Tank. Now, Skunk Tank it combos with this Toxicroak G, and you'll see here in a second. Uh, once during your turn, before you attack, if you have a Stadium card in play, now it has to be your Stadium card. If you have a Stadium card in play, you may use this power each active Pokemon of both yours and your opponents, excluding SP, so excluding these SP Pokemon that we have been seeing now. Are, are they're now poisoned? This power can't be used once again, especially by a special condition. So, if you have Skunk Tank on the bench, you use the poison structure. If you have a stadium card in play, they're poisoned, and now you can use the deep poison uh, 20, then 40, then the poison 70, which is a pretty cool combo there. And smoke screen at 20. If the defending Pokemon tries to attack during your opponent's next turn, your opponent flips a coin if tails, the attack does nothing. So that's a little cool, cool combo in this deck here. All right, so next up we have Azelf. Now, Azelf was another. Great card that saw, uh, uh, saw a lot of play. Um, it's weird that the Gengar deck didn't play one. Uh, once during your turn, when you put Azelf onto your bench, you may look at all your face down prize cards so you actually see what is prized in your prizes, which is uh, very nice. If you do, you may choose one Pokemon you find in there, show it to your Pokemon, and put it in your hand. Then choose one card in your hand and put it as a prize. I put it as a prize card face down. So basically, you look at your prizes. If there's a Pokemon in there, you take it out and you put another card onto your prizes. And when you do this, you can if you can memorize your prizes, you can make sure you take the right prize card when you take it when you take a knockout, which is pretty cool. And lock up twenty. The defending Pokemon can't retreat during your opponent's next turn. Uh, we okay. We have been over Yuxi level X. Now Yuxi level X. Once again, it's another level X, so you can see it has to be in the active spot. Uh, trade off here once during the turn before you attack. You may look at the top two cards of your deck, choose one of them, put it in your hand, put the other card on the bottom of your deck. This power can be used if it's if it's affected by a special condition. You only use the trade off once during your turn. Zen Blade 60, and you can't use Zen Blade again next turn. So the trade off is really strong here. Look at the top two cards of your deck, put one of them, and put the other on bottom of your deck. <laughs> Just uh, let's get another setup card. Um, we've been over Crobat. We'll go to Sableye here. Now, Sableye um, was one of the reasons why there was mid-rotation back in like 2011, 2012. If man wants to cooperate with me right now, come on now, don't do this to me. Come on, Sableye. All right. And you'll, um, I will maybe go to that a little bit later in a different video of why the ban or why the rotation happened. But Sableye has the over-eager, 
Pokemon. If Sableye is your active Pokemon at the beginning of the game, you go first, um, which is pretty cool there. So you automatically get to go first if Sableye is your active Pokemon. But if each Pokemon has a Sableye in the active spot, this power does nothing. So basically, you do the same thing. You flip a coin. Whoever wants the coin falls, uh gets to go first, if I remember correctly. But if you have a Sableye, you're like, oh, I get to go first. And if your opponent has one, then they just cancel each other out. Now you have another another no energy attack here with Impersonate. Search deck for a supporter card and discard it. Shuffle your deck afterwards. Then use the effect of that card as the effect of the attack. So that way you can usually you can actually use Sableye turn one to use a supporter. Back then I don't think you can use a trainer supporter stadium turn one. So the person eight lets you use a, sta a supporter card turn one, which is pretty nice. And you have overconfident here, ten damage. If the defending Pokemon has fewer remaining HP than the Sableye, this base uh, this type. This attack space damage is 40. So the defending Pokemon has fewer eight remaining HP than Sableye, which Sableye has 60, so it needs 50 or less. Um, it could do 40, which is pretty cool there. And you combine this with like Crobats, and you can easily knock out a Pokemon. And that's um, a short summary of why there was a rotation. It's a really long um, if video. Maybe one day I'll go over why there was a rotation. All right, so we know the Unknown G, we know the Uxie does, so we'll go over the Ditto. As you see, this deck plays a lot of one-of Pokemon, and that's why I didn't really like SPs back then. Um, there's just too many Pokemon. Um, it was just too techy for me. I didn't really like them. I like straightforward stuff. Uh, this Ditto here says, as long as Ditto is your active Pokemon, its maximum HP is the same as your opponent's active Pokemon. Ditto can use the attacks of that Pokemon as its own. You still need the necessary energy to use the attack. If that Pokemon is no longer your active Pokemon, choose one of your opponent's active Pokemon for Ditto to copy. Okay, what, what does it say? If that Pokemon is no longer your opponent's active Pokemon, choose one of your opponent's active Pokemon for Ditto to copy. Uh, this is for, like, if there was a double battle, I think. But uh, basically, you just copy your opponent's HP, and then you can use the attack if you have the correct energies, which is pretty cool there. Um, it's a weird tech card. You can use it to actually copy Gastly's... Um, a first attack to make it where you, your opponent can't play any trainer cards, or you opponent can't play any trainer cards, which is pretty cool there. Um, one one Diago level X. We'll just go over the Diago level X. So don't really worry about the Diago. Um, oh no, we need to go over the Diago. I forget the Diago is probably the, one of the most important cards here, um, which we kind of see nowadays. You'll see a lot of people actually reference this card. Uh, so it has a tech called Deafen. It does ten, and your opponent can't play any trainer cards or stadium cards from his or her hand during your opponent's next turn. So they can't play any training cards, which sounds just like Seismitoad. Alright, and uh, we have Second Strike here. 50, and the Defending Pokemon already has 2 or more damage counters on it. This attack does 50 more damage, plus 20 more damage, so 70 total that way. Alright, so now we have Diago, Diago G level X. Once again, Diago has to be an active Pokemon. Each Pokemon, both yours and your opponents, excluding Pokemon XP, can't use Pokebodies, which is pretty nice there. And a Remove Loss, I really never saw anybody use this attack. But remove loss is 80, flip a coin to two, get tails, for each head, so remove an energy card, attach the defending Pokemon, and put it in the lost zone. Now the lost zone was um, something that was above your prize cards, and once it's there, it's impossible to get anything out of the lost zone. Once it's there, it's gone forever. Um, there's a Mew, Mew Prime that can use the Pokemon in the lost zone. I think besides that, there was no other way to actually interact with the lost zone. There was a lost world card that made you win the game if you had six more Pokemon in your opponent's lost world, if I remember correctly. Uh, besides those two cards, I don't think anything really interacted with the lost world. It was just kind of a banished kind of part when you put a card in there, which is pretty cool there. Uh, one Bronzong, which I really like this card a lot. I wish it was not just for SP. But uh, once during the turn before you attack, you may move an energy card attached to one of your punk one of your Pokemon uh, SP to another of your Pokemon. Then put two damage counters on Bronze on. This power can be used once again with special by effective by special condition. So that way you can move energy cards any way you want to. If uh, you maybe attach a long energy, maybe you just need to attach an energy for the turn. You can move it later if it's attached to an SP Pokemon. And it has Psychic Pulse here. Once again, I don't think I've seen anybody really attack with Bronze Song. Uh, 40 damage does 10 damage to each opponent's bench Pokemon that has any damage counters already on it. Once again, don't apply weakness or resistance. Alright. And we have Lucario here. Finally, we'll be done with all the Pokemon. Oh, man, it's been forever. All right, apply weakness for each Pokemon as two times instead. And as you see, um, some cards are plus 20. Um, and some cards are times two. But this makes it where all Pokemon are times two instead, which is pretty cool there. And combo through 30. This does 30, more, does 30 damage plus 10 more damage for each energy attached to the defending Pokemon. So you kind of punish your Pokemon if they attach a lot of energies, which really didn't happen. Uh, bas basically, the Lucario is used for this 
Boundary Aurora, Aura, Aura, yeah, Aura, what I'm saying, um, which is pretty cool there. All right, so now we're finally doing Pokemon, and I know I'm going to forget what these Pokemon do during the uh, video, so bear with me in the in the videos to come. So we have Four Cyrus Conspiracy here. All right, and Four Cyrus Conspiracy is basically your setup card for the SP Pokemon. Search deck for a supporter card, a basic energy card, and a training card that has Team Galactic's invention in its name. Show them to your opponent and put it to your hand and shuffle your deck afterwards. Um, so a supporter card, so any supporter card, a basic energy, and a trainer card that has Team Galactics in its name. So basically what you want to do is you want to Cyrus for another Cyrus, an energy, and a Team Galactics invention. And as you hear, there is one, two, three, four, four different Team Galactics in, um, inventions in its name. So we have one Aaron's Collection here. It says, search deck for, the search decks are powerful for up to two in any combination of Pokemon SP and basic energy cards. Show them to your opponent and put them into your hand. Um, so they actually goes into your hand and that shelf into your deck, which is the difference between the, um, the soup, not the soup, the night main. It's there we go. I don't know why I want to say super rod. All right. So two Moonlight Stadium this is a pretty straightforward card. Nothing too crazy about it. Um, their tree cost for each psyching and dark Pokemon is zero, which is pretty cool. Um, everybody, your Pokemon have free tree cost if they're a psychic or dark Pokemon. Like I said, pretty straightforward. Alright, so we've been over the Pokemon turn, return and SP Pokemon to your hand and all cards. Energy Gain was probably one of the most broke cards of its time. Um, I really do like it a lot. It made it where SP Pokemon, why SP Pokemon are so good. Um, so as I said, it, you know, you can only attach in these, uh, po these Team Galactic cards to an SP Pokemon. And uh, when they're knocked out, um, you know, you have to discard the tool. That's basically what the top part says. But as long as Team Galactic's Invention G101 Energy Gain is attached to Pokemon, this tech cost of the Pokemon is one colorless less. And as you've seen in the video, you see a lot, of Poke a lot of the SP Pokemon have some color energy and a colorless energy. So if you attach an energy and an energy gain, you can basically attack for one energy, which is pretty cool there. And combine this with Cyrus Conspiracy, Conspiracy, you can get an energy and an energy gain, and you can start attacking turn one, which is fairly strong. Three, Power Spray. Once again, one of the reasons why SP was one of the most broke cards, or one of the broke sets in the game. Um, you may play this card during your opponent's turn. So you can actually play this during your opponent's turn. When your opponent... When your opponent's Pokemon uses any Poke Power, prevent all effects of that Poke Power. If you have two or more less Pokemon to play, you can't disc you can't play this card. So basically, you need um, three SP Pokemon or more to use this card. And if your opponent puts down maybe okay, let's see that like they're going to use a Yuxi, you can go Power Spray, and now they can't use it. They're like, okay, I guess I can't use this now. Uh, but you actually had to time the power spray. Maybe they had the clay doll. Maybe they had the Yuxi. You had to like pick your poison. Like which one am I gonna go after? Uh, which is pretty cool there. And as you see, there is four. Or I uh, only play three, but it's still three is pretty strong there. All right, so we have three SP radar here. Um, SP radar is basically a way you search out your SP Pokemon. Search your deck, choose a card from your hand, put it on top of your deck. Search your po search your deck for an SP Pokemon. Show it to your opponent, put it in your hand, shuffle your deck afterwards. This card can only be um, that if this is the only card in your hand you can't play this card because you can't put a card into your deck that's for you okay yeah all right so we have one galactic hq here i think this combines with the sp pokemon if i remember correctly uh, whenever any player plays any pokemon for his or her hand to evolve his or her pokemon put two damage counters on that pokemon uh, do i remember if level x count is evolving i don't think so uh, but maybe it does uh, this card uh, Maybe it's just like to hurt the Gengar decks or any Pokemon that I have to set up. All right, so we have one SP energy here. I'm still kind of wondering why it's only plays one SP energy. I because you can't search it out with Cyrus. Duh. I just remember that right now as I said this. Uh, SP energy provides colorless energy. While attached to Pokemon SP, SP energy provides every type of energy, but only provides one energy at a time. Um, like I said, it it wasn't mainly it wasn't used a lot because you Cyrus you can't Cyrus for it, but you can Cyrus for any other colors energy. Uh, so we have three dark, three lightning, and two psychic, and that is the what is this? The crowned tiger deck. Like I said, I'm probably going to mix this up. I'm probably going to forget what Hunchcore does. Like I, I always forget what it does when I'm playing. Um, probably going to forget what the Toxicroak does, um, and probably the Skunk Tank, just because I wasn't really that used to the deck. I'm more used to like the Luxray, Garchomp, 
uh, Dialga, stuff like that. Even the Palkia, I know what that does more than I know what this Hunchkrow uh, Skunk Tank stuff does. So watching this video, this is probably one of the first times I've actually played this deck, so I'm really rusty with it. But hopefully you enjoyed this breakdown. I know it was rather long. Hopefully you enjoyed it. You learned some what cards, some of the cards do. And uh, here, if you see later on, you'll see a video that says round one of the 2009 World Championship decks. So hopefully you enjoyed. Thanks for watching. Uh, hopefully, like I said, you learned something new about these decks. Have a great day. Alrighty, bye.